As the voice referendum draws closer, there are serious concerns about the tenor of the debate and the impact of racist commentary. We're seeing the way this nation actually feels about First Nations people and what we live every single day, whether there's a referendum or no referendum, we are the subject of this racism and this harm. Leading No campaigner, Warren Mundine, has described feeling suicidal at points. It's uh, took a very, very massive toll on me because it was just constant attacks and uh, for month after month after month. It's just this crazy vitriolic stuff. Mundine has also claimed Yes campaigner Noel Pearson racially vilified him by saying he was a puppet of white conservative groups. Which is a whole lot of nonsense. It, it, it's about uh, what people believe and, and what people uh, th think should be done within this uh, referendum, whether it be a yes campaign or a no campaign. Pearson has expressed regret over his comments. I'm not perfect, like everybody. I'm a debater in public life. I've got a cause to prosecute and I make mistakes. At the same time, the No campaign has been dealing with the fallout from several racism controversies. In July, the conservative lobby group Advance Australia published a cartoon in the Australian Financial Review, which was widely condemned as racist. In August, Mundine revealed two No volunteers had been sacked for making anti-Semitic comments. One of them was talking about, uh, you know, how, how many uh, Jewish people are in the Yes campaign and, and I just said, look, fellas, uh, you know, we're not going to cop that. You better get out of here. Mundine is the chairman of the Conservative Political Action Conference, known as CPAC, a not-for-profit group. Vote no. Who's going to vote no? <laughs> Good on you. Its annual conference last month featured this comedian. But seriously, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners, violent black men. No campaigner Gary Johns, who has previously suggested blood tests should be required to prove Aboriginal heritage, also spoke at the conference. If you want a voice, learn English. That's your voice. I think that there are some extreme positions and some extreme people that have been platformed in the course of this campaign. These are not reflective of a debate of a modern society. We're not really reflecting on what does that do to our children and young people? What does that do to the current crisis that we face as First Nations people already? 7.30 has learned a different speaker at this year's CPAC event has a history of racially abusing Indigenous Australians. What happens to all of these politicians who are quick to say that they support the Aboriginals or the gay community? What about just the Australian community? Elijah Schaefer is an American podcast host living in Australia. Where does racism begin? Where does it end? Is racism a problem? I know it's a little spicy. He's previously attacked Aboriginal Australians using a racist slur and has said that they are among his, quote, least favourite minorities. Maybe that's why they don't, that's why you should vote no on The Voice. We can't tune off to that. We can't just, you know, switch off. This is, we've got to live this. And what does it mean for our most vulnerable, our kids and those that are doing it toughest in our rural and remote communities, that their lives don't matter? That is not who we are as a country. I think it's very important that people that are running platforms are careful and judicious with who they give a profile to. Last month, Schaefer on his podcast hosted an Australian neo-Nazi who has spread anti-Semitic conspiracy theories about The Voice. Mundine tells us members of the Jewish community raised concerns about Schaefer before CPAC. And yet he still spoke at the conference. Yeah, that, we went through a process of arguing about that and then we sat down with some of the, the Jewish community in that. And in the end of the day, it was about um, it was about free speech. Mundine says he was unaware of Schaefer's views on Indigenous Australians, which he describes as rubbish. Would you ever have him back at CPAC? Look, we've had those discussions. Uh, we're working uh, through that whole process and you, you can see what's going to happen next year. But just based on the comments about Indigenous Australians, I've read well, to you, I, you today. Know, as I said, I, I talk to everyone, and we'll talk to we'll talk to them, and we'll talk about you know changing attitudes and 
and t changing uh, racist views and stuff like that. And uh, we'll go from there. What, yes? An information in the mom form. What, what we're beginning to see is it get really ugly and it turning from a place where maybe we could have had critical discussion and debate to now actually this is discrimination and you are harming our people. Mundine's group, Recognise a Better Way, has joined forces with another no campaign run by Advance Australia. I'll be voting no, because this will not unite us, this will divide us. Sitting on the advisory council of Advance Australia is voice opponent David Adler. He's been criticised for comments questioning the appearance and heritage of high profile Indigenous Australians. Also on the advisory council is businessman Morris Newman. Clearly the voice is a proposal from the heart and not from the head. In an article published this year, Newman said that, quote, many disaffected Aborigines prefer to, quote, dwell on colonial injustices. I consider the, those type of comments and those fringe views to be highly offensive, discriminatory and unacceptable. Again, that's a legitimate debate, you know, whether people agree with it or not, that's fine. Newman has said this about the number of single mothers in Indigenous communities. Single mothers are likelier than married mothers to be poorer and unemployed and to instill in their children's minds a sense of victimhood and helplessness. I don't agree with that view at all because I don't have, I've never seen any evidence of that. These punch down politics towards our most vulnerable and attacks towards single mums, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander mums, is just unacceptable. Newman was unavailable for an interview. In a statement, he defended his comment about single mothers as being, quote, hardly baseless. Taking offence and making allegations of racism only perpetuate the tyranny of low expectations. The referendum is weeks away and the debate is set to only intensify. Indigenous leaders are calling for respect from all sides. What I would say to non-Indigenous people is do not be a bystander to racism. The reality is that we carry the burden every single day. 